her. She's been hoarding them. It was a hundred bucks. We're gonna be able to fit about 10 chickens. Finish the little door, I just wanna show you that real quick. What's up, Billings fam? Welcome back. Beautiful, beautiful day today. Perfect day to get things done because unfortunately, there aren't gonna be too many nice days like this for the next couple of weeks. So I went to Home Depot this morning, rented a truck. Yes, I rented a truck just to get all the wood we needed. So we picked up some plywood here. We got all this wood over here. Tay is taking a nice little nap. We got all this wood. We have so many projects to finish building today. The ducks are super loud. I'm sorry. Uh, Georgia is in there chasing them around. She loves doing it. But anyways, we have, uh, I told you the ducks are getting a new home out of there into there. So we got to finish that. Tay's been doing most of that. We're going to build a shed. We're going to build a greenhouse. Really, really cool. And we got to finish up the really big chicken coop that we're building. Um, one quick little note. So like the greenhouse we're doing. So we're going to start a secondary channel it's gonna be mostly about homesteading and stuff like that if you're interested in that you got to check it out um, but this channel is gonna be our main channel and we're gonna still do all of our animals and all of that so in here but it's been getting way too muddy and it is not good for the chickens to be in mud all the time so instead of doing sand or wood chips or all of that we're actually gonna do bark mulch so I got a bunch of bags we're gonna pour that in spread it out and hopefully that should help absorb a lot of it and not make it so muddy impressions of the mulch I love it I love the look of it I think it looks a lot nicer and really doesn't look as messy um, and I hope it will do well for the absorption but the other big thing about mulch is it helps keep the chickens busy they're gonna always burrow through this looking for bugs looking for insects that type of stuff so really really cool but the other main thing is as you can see right there our huge chicken coop. So we've needed a nice chicken coop for a while um, something with a little bit more size most chicken coops if you guys have looked around and and realized are like four or five hundred bucks and even at that point you can only fit like maybe six chickens if you're lucky um ours was a hundred bucks and we're gonna be able to fit about 10 chickens in there so that's pretty much what we're doing and i'm going to show you the ins and outs of how to build that chicken coop so make sure you stay tuned for that if you don't want to see the whole tutorial of how to do that skip through to the end there will be some other cool things at the end stay tuned let me show you how it's done so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step in case anybody out there wants to build this, step-by-step -step how to build the frame. Just bear in mind the final product of this. It's gonna take a few videos for us, but the final product is gonna look totally different. There's gonna be a frame on here. We're building a little door to open for them, which that you guys will see. We are gonna do that near the end of this. Um, and then the inside obviously is gonna look, look a lot different too, because later on we're gonna insulate it and we're gonna add their nesting boxes. That will be coming soon. So make sure you stay tuned. Those will be in videos coming soon. This simply is just gonna tell you how we did this frame. I got all my notes here so I can make sure we did this correctly. And you'll be watching along, by the way, you're gonna see it. To start off, you're gonna get three two by fours. You're gonna cut four inches at the end of each piece and then cut the larger pieces directly in half. So all of this that I'm talking about right now is for the frame that you will see in here. You'll end up with six pieces of two by four that are three foot, 10 inches. You're gonna then drill them into two full size two by fours, just like this to build the frame by the end, you will have two rectangles. <laughs> okay, Grayson, shush, please. Thank you for telling me. With the leftover two by fours, you're going to measure the middle of the rectangle and drill one two by four on each rectangle for support. So you're gonna have a top and a bottom. That is your frame. You're now gonna take one two by four, cut it directly in half at four feet, then take another two by four, cut four inches off the end, and then cut the large piece directly in half. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Hope you can follow along with that. These are going to be your vertical braces to support the walls. Drill the two taller braces into the front side of the bottom rectangle and the shorter ones in the back. We are then gonna take a piece of four by eight plywood. In this case, we used OSB. It is cheaper and serves the same purpose. Place the plywood on top of the rectangle brace it should fit perfectly drilled in. Once that is secure, you're going to need a second pair of hands. <laughs> this is where Tay came in. I suggest planning ahead of time for this and not making your wife who is six months pregnant lift heavy things. Unfortunately, it was either Tay or Grayson and, and that wasn't an option. <laughs> uh, anyway, you basically end up with the roof in place and you wanna match all four corners up and screw everything in. Um, so I know you're looking at the video, but that's basically this. It's gonna sit right on these braces and then you can drill right in. It actually fit pretty easily. 
You'll notice that the back end is slanted downwards slightly. This will help the rain run down and not pool on top of the coop. In our case, we will be building a gutter system to collect the water for the chickens and ducks. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. So that's gonna be really cool. As you can see here, we did a little bit of a slant and it has worked beautifully. We've had a ton of rain and it just basically rolls right off. Uh, and we're gonna end up building, like I said, a gutter system, which is really cool. Once you have the roof in place and your children are done using it as a playhouse, you're going to go ahead and flip it on the other side to secure a four by eight plywood to the bottom. This will act as the floor, which you see in there, which is now covered with our wood chips. Take another piece of plywood, place it on what will be the back side of the coop, screw that in and there will be a two inch overhang on the bottom you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut that off. The extra hangover is because of the pitched roof. So that was back on the back side. It had a little bit of a hangover. We literally just took our sawzall and it was super easy, just cut right off. Here's where it may get a little confusing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm going to write down the exact measurement on the screen here, but what we were using is two two by fours. These two by fours are going to fill in the gaps on the side walls here. So if you don't do this, there's a little bit of a gap. And when you go to put your metal braces on, there's nothing to screw to. So you gotta put it right in there. These two by fours are gonna fill the gaps, sidewalls where your vertical braces are. So basically if you didn't put these in there, there'd be a gap as I just said. So you're gonna cut these to the measurements that I put on the screen and drill them to the outside of the frame. So it'll literally fit here and here. You wanna make it nice and snug. So I had to hammer the bottom in there. And it was just, it was, again, wasn't too difficult. Hammer it in, screw it right in from the back. Now that you have any gaps filled, you're gonna take a piece of plywood and cut it directly in half at four feet. You should end up with two pieces of four by four for the side walls. You're gonna screw these in on either side. It's not gonna be exact, but you're going to need to cut off the excess wood again because of the pitch. Again, super easy, it just lines up on the edge. You just cut right down. Uh, then uh, voila, you have the base work of a chicken coop. Let me open both sides so you can see this. Um, this is a good time to stop real quick. I want to tell you something really funny, funny story. <laughs> Let's see our little pamper box, temporary little uh, brooder box here. So Henny is in there, as you can see. Henny is broody. For any of you who don't know what broody means, it means she thinks she's a mother and she wants to let her eggs hatch. Now, obviously her eggs won't hatch because we don't have a rooster, but she thinks they're going to. So she has been sitting on her eggs. Now, it's really funny, but it's actually been very, uh, also a very annoying because there hasn't been enough room for uh, Clover to get in there and lay her eggs. So we haven't had eggs in about a week, which is really frustrating. So uh, we're gonna get fake, these really cool little, what are they called? Fake eggs yeah. of some sort. They're basically fake eggs. And we're going to hopefully put them under Henny take out the real eggs so that one, you don't have eggs that go bad in here, and two, she doesn't get upset because if I go near her right now, she she gets really mad at me. Oh, okay, honey. Okay, the Velociraptor. Yeah. So for the door, uh, I'm not gonna go into complete detail because you can do it many different ways. It was just another piece of four by eight plywood that we cut in half. You can keep it one big solid piece and put hinges and flip it up. I've seen it done different ways. We chose to cut it in half so we can open this way to clean it out. Um, here, it is super unlevel in the coop here, as you can tell, like we're literally on a pitch. So it's really difficult to get this straight. So we had some, a little bit of troubles with measuring it and cutting it and you know, we did the best we could. And again, once it's framed out, it's gonna look a lot better. Um, if you have any suggestions of how that might go easier or a better way, please, I'm always up for suggestions. So put those down in the comments below. But overall, I'm pretty pumped. And again, so many more things we're gonna do. I think it's amazing. Uh, plenty of room, super supportive in there. I've been walking in there. Grayson was playing it as a playhouse. Really funny. Just a couple of other things too. On some gaps all around the side, we used caulking just so the rain wouldn't get in there. Obviously use animal safe and we used weather resistant caulking. Oh, oh yes. We also sealed the floor. We put a sealant on the floor so that if it did get wet, which it will get wet, uh, it won't get ruined. I already put it on a little bit of a raised area here on these cinder blocks, but we're gonna put about three or four more. We're gonna get it high enough so that the chickens can go under it as well. Um, give them some more room that we're not taking up their coop but I mean guys you can see let me open both of this babe so they can see the whole thing I mean plenty of room in here so we're gonna eventually get that house probably out of there the little the little brooder box and we're gonna put a whole rack of nesting boxes in the back we're also gonna put a roosting bar across that they will sit on and perch which they love to do but guys I'm, I'm pumped and like I said it was under 100 bucks 
super easy to do. It took us one day to get all this done. Now, obviously, the little details are gonna take are gonna take us a bit, but great. What do you think? You love it? Yeah. You're gonna fit all the chickens in here. Yeah. Oh, so one thing—a complete separate video that's gonna happen. But because she's broody, uh, Tay ordered some new eggs that are we're gonna try and hatch. We're gonna try putting one under her and see if she can hatch it. I'm excited for that. Make sure you stay tuned because that's gonna be really cool. So last thing we're gonna do today on this video, we're gonna put the little door on so that we don't have to open these huge ones anymore. We're gonna be able to open that and latch it. So let's get her done. What you guys just missed, Henny just came charging out of there. She hasn't left that thing in forever. Look at all of the clover eggs that were underneath her. She's been hoarding them. They're she's, not even her eggs. They're not even her eggs. And Hers she's gonna blue. be she's gonna be pissed that I'm doing this, but I have to take them because we don't want them to all go bad and we would like some eggs. So yeah, that's what happened. So this is what we're gonna use for the door that we're gonna flip up. So all we're gonna do real quick is cut three little pieces to the shape of this for the trim around this so that you can put the hinges on there. So, can I see? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you decorating for us? Yeah. Okay, good. Yay. Sweet. So it works. Again, super easy. Two small hinges here, put the little frame. What we're going to do is open this, and now we can cut this hole however we want, however big we want to this. Probably go, you know, somewhere in there. Little trick, I don't want to cut the bottom. We want to leave a little lip just so there's no draft. So little trick, use one of these, the hole saws, to get started so that you can fit your sawzall blade in. So, and again, this doesn't have to be precise. <laughs> There it is. We are, I don't want to say done because there's still so much work to go, but this is basically the rough draft. This is the, the, the skeleton of it, of what you want. So we finished the little door. I just want to show you that real quick. Um, we got the little hinge there, opens up. They climb right in again. Still going to put a nice little ramp for them to walk up into uh, and everything else. And again, the outside is, <laughs> those guys are so loud. The outside I mean, it's going to have a crazy transformation, guys. We still are going to have frame all the outside of it. We're going to paint it up really nice. It's going to look amazing. We're going to get a nice roof on this that hangs over a little so no water gets in there. It's going to look awesome. Make sure you stay tuned because we'll be tweaking this the rest of the year and we'll always have it in the videos. But I like the inside. I think the inside looks amazing. And again, so much room for activities in there. So much room for, uh, you know, we could easily fit the 10 chickens in here, if not more. I don't know that we're going to have 10 chickens, but this rate we probably will um henny's in there and some good news i did put one of the eggs under her and she she took it she took it right under her so we're gonna see i'm pretty excited hopefully she hatches that'd be really cool but please guys give me some comments down below if you've built these before let me know what you've done don't go too hard on me i know it's not perfect but i love it i think it came out great super sturdy it will work great for them especially in the winter when we put insulation let me know what you think though if you have some critiques let me know let's get to this episode's good vibe shout out Goes out to David Tatum. Love the variety of critters. I'd love to build a koi pond myself. Well, thank you. We love the variety of critters. We want so many more critters and animals. If you didn't see the last video, there's another chance at a gift card. Check it out, do what it says. Next video, we will be releasing the winner. So that's pretty much it, guys. As always, peace. Subscribe below, look at this guy. He won't get They always come over to us. We are walking to PetSmart. Very, very small fish. Excellent, guys. Fred is in great shape. Clover, say hi. Is doing so much better underneath.